Well, good uh, morning, everybody. Uh, this is Dean Still from Afrobetro Research Center, and I thought that I would try to go over with you the design principles that I use to try to make Tier 4 stoves. And so this is about cleaner combustion. Um, you know, over the years, I was just reminded that uh, in the last two years, we've done more than a thousand tests uh, of wood burning stoves. And um, we are in the middle of a Department of Energy study trying to see um, can we make tier four stoves. So here we go. Here are just my design principles. Um, we all know that we're starting with wood and we need to uh, make that wood burn. So the most important thing to me is the size of the fire, the flame, that if you have too big, uh, too much wood burning at any one time, and that is not matched to the amount of flame above that wood, uh, then some of the pollutants, the CO and the PM, will go, um, they won't go into the flame and they won't be burned up. So in my mind, I'm always trying to look at the wood burning and make sure that everything is entrained, is pulled into the flame. So the, the wood gets hot, it makes gases, those gases then combust, and all of the CO and the PM have to be made to enter the flame. And in a T-LUD, that's pretty easy to do because we can have the wood burning below and then the secondary air coming in through holes underneath a plate like this forces everything to beautifully combine together into a column of flame and that uh, column of flame obviously is then forcing all of the pollutants into the flame. Now the really important thing at that point is You'll still, when you use a lens, uh, a hood, you will see that you're not close to tier four usually. You are still in tier two, three, unless you think about time. And so the time is extremely important. This, if you imagine in your mind's eye a column of flame, if you put the pot uh, down too low, there hasn't been enough time for the CO and the PM to burn up in that flame. And usually the flame has to be pretty tall. You'll see the T-LUDs are usually pretty tall to give enough time for the pollutants to burn out in the flame. And so um, forcing in any stove all of the smoke, the air, the gases to enter the flame by the architecture, by the shape in the combustion chamber is very important. And uh, I keep in my mind's eye the idea taken from a T-LUD of actually having everything forced into a, a column, which obviously does a really good job, and then having that column tall enough to burn everything up. So let's say that we now have flame that is extremely clean and the pot is somewhere high enough above the flame so that uh, when we are looking on the uh, real-time emissions or the gravimetric emissions, we're not seeing hardly any PM. Well, then we have to get 45% uh, thermal efficiency. And so as I've said before, just the easiest rule of thumb is to use 2.5 kilowatts of um, firepower coupled to a 6 mm gap. And uh, most any insulated stove will be able to then achieve over 45% thermal efficiency. But I also want to remind you that normal insulations are um, not great. I mean, even a lightweight clay, 
is really not insulation. You know, insulation is that pink stuff that you put in your walls. It's extremely light. And for a stove to be achieving at these very high levels, we need to use insulation that is as good as the stuff that we put in our walls uh, in houses. Having heavier materials in a stove just does a lot of bad things at, uh, at once. It lowers the temperatures of the gases, it robs heat from the pot, um, it lowers the temperature in the combustion chamber, and so you know, if you want highest thermal efficiency, you're going to find that you have to super insulate uh, everywhere along the heat flow path. And then um, another thing that we need to pay attention to is this is a, a 24 centimeter in diameter pot. So yes, it's great. You have a big bottom to get all that uh, heat transfer and then you have the sides but here's also what you have. You have a lot of surface area of the water and as it's approaching boiling, more and more energy is going into making steam. So the larger the pot diameter, the more energy is going to go into making steam. And when you're using uh, if you're coupling 2.5 kilowatts with a 6 mm gap, you're going to find that um, smaller pots, smaller pots in diameter, uh, are easier to bring to boil than larger pots in diameter. And so you're balancing again. Yes, it's great that the bottom's big, but it's not so great that you're causing all that evaporation and it's harder to bring the water to boil. And then I guess the the last thing is that, you know, on a wet wood basis, to get tier four, when you're having to, say, boil five liters and then simmer it for 45 minutes, the wet wood basis is uh, something like 440 grams of wood that can be used for the entire test. Very uh, recently, we thought that a great stove was anything that used less than 800 grams. So the tier four requirement is pushing us very hard to uh, really uh, make super efficient stoves. And I guess again, that just reminds me that higher mass stoves are never gonna be able to make that requirement. Um, so I hope that these personal uh, design principles are useful to you and, um, you know, as we learn things, we'll try to share them with you.